Washington, D.C. is a deeply corrupt place. Uh, it is not this idealistic land of promise where meritorious ideas are debated and advanced and voted on. It is a place increasingly where the lobbyists and the special interests write the scripts, produce the plays, and then the people who are elected are just actors who go out and perform the wishes of others who are not acting in the best interest of our countrymen. And the best example of how that plays out is thinking about how we spend money, right? Like everything from our state legislatures down to the locals Kiwanis Club knows how to spend money effectively. You go through line items of a budget and you assess what might need more investment and what would be subject to reduction. But we fund our government by one up or down vote on the entire budget of the United States all at once. And when I say that is nuts, they call me crazy. I think they're the crazy ones who do that because then you're having to make a choice about whether or not to deprive our military members of their pay, our veterans of their benefits, while like determining whether or not you're going to fund the deputy commissar of transgender operations at the Department of Education. And any serious organization would subject the agencies of government to line item review. And then regardless of whether the Republicans or the Democrats are in control, you have amendments, people can take votes. If the people don't like how their members of Congress are voting on those amendments, they can make better choices in subsequent elections. But we escape that accountability by having this system that's one up or down vote. And so if you're a reasonable, rational person, you would say, well, why would you do that? That sounds very counterproductive. And the re it's not a bug of the system. It's a feature. Because if the right lobbyist or the right special interest goes and buys off the right committee chairman or the right members of, a, of an appropriations committee, then they get their program in the budget and then it's there for life. It's there beyond life. It's the closest thing there is to eternal life is a government program. And, and so they do that so that they stay in power. And what is, what is the consequence of that mechanism of budgeting? We are $37 trillion in debt. We are absolutely on our way to $50 trillion in debt. And there is no realistic plan to, to divert course from that eventuality. Moreover, we go a trillion dollars more in debt every hundred days in the United States of America. Every hundred days, a trillion more in debt. And so when I talk about these things, sometimes people's eyes glaze over because it's federal budgeting and it's not like the border or all the other stuff going on that, that, that's of great interest. But if we do not fix this problem, none of the rest of this is going to matter. There is no army that will protect us. There is no border that will defend us. There is no distant land that we can convert to our purposes if we fail. For all the criticism conservatives get for being anti-institutionalists, the institution that has lifted more people out of poverty and given more people the chance to live their dreams is the U.S. dollar. And Congress is destroying that right now. And I will go die in the last ditch fighting for single subject spending bills where these folks have to step forward and justify what they do and why they are hurting the future of our country.